just getting out uh, get out from work now i'm going home um I feel like sharing something again today um for your edification um uh, maybe you may be there for somebody to so help somebody out you never know what i'm sharing is is i'm not an expertise or a perfect you know knowledgeable in the field. However, for the prudent and wise, you may pick one or two things from what I'm saying that may be able to help you. Looks like the sun is disturbing this in my camera. It's early morning and the sun is coming out. Pick one or two things that may be able to help you in your life or whatever situation you are going to now. And that is my purpose. Even if I can achieve, even if I can be able to help just one single soul, and with this my message, I've achieved a lot. Because um, I believe in. Uh, to whom more is given, more is expected of him. I've received a lot in my life. I've been blessed abundantly, exceedingly beyond my imagination. I think it's time for me now to give back to the society, to mankind. There's something bothering me I want to share today. There is really something bothering me. You know, um, I really want to, you know, it's a sharing and it's a question and it's a concern. It's something I don't understand. I keep thinking about this a, long, a lot of time. It's peculiar to my people. When I say my people, I'm talking about the everybody's my people. Don't quote me wrong. I'm not a racist. I'm not prejudiced. I love all mankind, but I still love my people, my heritage. I love my culture. I'm talking about the Igbo people. The the people that made up the Igbos. You can call it the Igbo, you can call it the Igbo, or whatever. The Lion of Judea for Nigeria. The people that made up the most predominantly the eastern part of the Nigerian territory. The way is carved up as of now by the British uh, Empire, British government. 1960 when they decided to give Nigeria their independence. What I'm about to share is a, it's a peculiar concern to, the, to me as an Igbo man, as a Christian Igbo, or as a Christian Igbo. You see, Christianity has a root in Igbo land. During the beginning of the early stage of Christianity, Igbo man was the forefront in bringing Christendom in Nigeria. At one point, Igbo man was an European to most of the Nigerian, Yoruba, Hausa, and others combined. Igbo man was a, to, to them, Igbo man was a typical European man in wisdom, in knowledge, in everything. Igbo man, Igbo man was a lead. Igbo people used to be the leader. They don't follow. But they, they develop what that's called. They are the typical Jewish of the African continent. They make things out of nothing. They are very resilient. They struggle. They work hard. They dominate. When you say Jew, you're talking about Igbo man. There was a history I even read that traced our route back to the Jewish. 
Jewish origin. But the thing that is concerning me is when the things start falling apart, when the Igbo man become a follow follow in Nigeria. You see, <laughs> I'm trying to say this, I'm trying to be very meticulous and careful in, in using my language so that I will not be perceived as very prejudiced and racist. But sometimes, you know, you cannot avoid people saying, I don't, mm, I don't care what they're going to say anyway, because regardless of what I say, somebody's going to say, okay, he's, he's this, he's that, that, so be it. But I'm going to say what I'm going to say. When did Igbo man start follow follow? Hmm? When did Igbo man lose the leadership, especially in Christian? In the Christian faith? When did Igbo man Start, you know, stop being a dominant factor in Nigeria in terms of Christian. That was it. <laughs> okay, let me go closer. Let me go closer. If you go to, if you come here now, in almost every churches you have, there's a thousand of denomination now. Majority of the leaders will be the Yorubas or the you know other culture. But if you go to the people worshiping that church in the congregation, majority or if not the key prominent people that hold that church will be the Igbos. But if an Igbo man opens a church, when an Igbo man start a church, no matter how endowed or blessed he is with the word of God, Igbo people will not go to that church. They will avoid him. He will eventually decay, eventually. Nobody will, no matter how blessed he is. Why is that? There's a proverb they say, you know, this is why Igbo, Igbo is like a feather. They feed the, they feed the boat, but they're not weight. If a Yoruba man open a church, Igbo man will be the first person to go there and start climbing and in a hand. But if, if Igbo man open a church, okay, let me ask you a question. How many Yoruba did you see in an Igbo? Any church that is Igbo man is the leader or a pastor or the G or whatever. How many Yoruba did you see in that church? Why can't the Yoruba go to an Igbo, an Igbo church or a church that is predominantly Igbos? Why do the Igbos have to always go to the church of a Yoruba, Yoruba man? What is it that, uh, is that in a Yoruba church that Igbo man church can never deliver? This is something that is, I can't understand. You see, and until the Igbo people come to their senses and realize this and do something about this they keep on going backward and backward the gift of God is freely given I have gone to several churches here several mm -hmm. When I say several, it means I've gone to more than two, three. Predominantly Yoruba church. What I mean by Yoruba is they are the pastor, they are the GO, they are everything. When you go there, you see bulls. Igbo people. Follow, follow. They will be the first to come. They will do everything. Eh? They will... They will be in the usher, they will, they will make everything to make the church stand. But if it's an Igbo man that opened that church, 
they will say one con they will use one word or the other to whatever tarnish the image and that thing won't that thing won't work that church won't eventually that church will collapse why is it that Igbos are very hard in patronizing their own people? And you see a lot of Igbos are highly gifted, highly gifted by God, very well blessed and adored by the supernatural being. But they cannot flourish because there are people, who, well the Bible even said the prophet is not recognizing his own fight. His own, you know, fatherland, his own, his own country or his own territory. No wonder. You see, this is a question I'm throwing out there. If anybody have a concern, you know, if you can shoot me, just tell me why. I've looked so well on the so Yoruba churches. I don't see anything special or different compared to a woman own church. But, but if you see how a minister or a pastor, a pastor is suffering, or how he's going through hell or whatever he's going through, you're a bad pastor will not go through it. Igbo man will even. Why can't an Igbo man patronize their own people? Why can't we take the leadership that we have been taking prior to 1960s? in leading the faith. Why why is it all why can't we just come to our senses again and do what we're supposed to do and do it right and stop being follow follow. Why can't we do that? That's my question. You see, I've been I've been watching. If you come here now, even <laughs> even an idiot here now. I don't I don't want to use that word. When you see the even <laughs> the type of people that are opening churches here now. When I'm talking here, I say I mean America. It's amazing. Churches are growing up. I have no problem with the churches growing up. I don't. But I have a problem when people are not well equipped to open a church. They start opening a church for the sake of making money. That's where I don't agree. And whenever I go to that, those churches, you see both people every, jumping around, uh, grinning on your face. Uh, they're in the usher, they're in a protocol. Uh, they're everywhere, they will do everything, they will come low. Now, nah, Rachacha, if I may put it in, you know, trying to get a, a nice word. Now, nah, Rachacha, nah, Rachacha. But all we need to be a church, you will not see them there. Let me tell you something. I'm going to say, Rachacha, Rishina, here, Rachacha, Ruelu. Yoruba man will never take you as his own people. You can Rachachala, what's up, Lamasa, you still an evil man. <laughs> 